when I, I know I'm speaking the obvious, especially the fact that we already knew this a few months ahead of time, but it's clear now more than ever that Donald Trump and Joe Biden are going to be the be the nominees for the Republican and Democratic parties respectfully. But now people are talking about who's possibly going to be the vice president, especially under Donald Trump. And this is a concerning the fact that two weeks ago, as I'm making this video on the 14th, Donald Trump was found guilty on all 34 charges of falsifying business records. Now, that is like that Donald Trump is moving to get that appealed, and potentially the Supreme Court could have a say in that, but it will have to wait until June 11th, which, by the way, the Republican National Committee is about is three to four days later. Yeah, I'm pretty, yeah, this is a little too on the nose in regards to political persecution, but that's just me. Now people are talking about the possibility, especially thanks to the fact that the, of the guilty verdict that occurred in New York, people are wondering who may be the maybe the vice presidential pick under Donald Trump. Currently with Joe Biden, he's stick, stuck with Kamala Harris. She is the incumbent, whether they whether people like it or not, and there is not really a good replacement. There you, you could have done something like you could choose Pete Buttigieg or even uh, Gavin Newsom and many others as well. But in all honesty, they wouldn't be as good. And quite frankly, considering the fact that the Democratic Party is now the party of identity politics, it would just it would look bad on Joe Biden if he decided to get rid of a woman of, of a black woman as his possible vice presidential pick just the just based upon the optics alone now in this video we're going to look at the possible picks of who's going to be donald trump's vice presidential pick now here's the thing this is more this is a prediction or at least what i would prefer to be as a potential pick and maybe even a, even a little bit of the cabinet position but i'm not entirely sure of who's going to be Donald Trump's vice presidential pick. For all I know, he could announce it tomorrow. He could announce it a month from now. He could announce it at the Republican National Convention. I don't know. But what I do know is, it's still all up in the air. So here are the few names. <coughs> ben Carson. Oh, and by the way, I'm only going to look at the best possible contenders. All the I know that there are a few others like Doug Burgum or Marco Rubio, but or even Senator Tom Cotton. But in all honesty, I don't think that it's likely that those guys are going to be chosen for that position. Maybe as a cabinet position, but I'm not sure which position, which cabinet position they would what they would take, if at all. Ben Carson, former. Former House and Urban Development Secretary under Donald Trump and 2016 presidential candidate. Now, he's well spoken. He is uh, he, he he's Af he's black. He's African American, which would definitely bring the bring the uh, African American vote towards the Trump campaign. But I don't and of course he's from Florida, which would further put Florida into the Republican column. But I don't. I just. Don't, I don't. I don't know. I would not be surprised if he takes another job within within Trump's cabinet in the second term. But I don't think that Ben Carson would be the vet, best VP pick. <clears throat> Byron Dawes from Florida. He is currently the representative from the state of Florida, and he's been serving that since twenty twenty one. He is young, he is black, much like Ben Carson, which would definitely, again, bring the African-American vote towards uh, Trump. But he, but, he get, but he is a representative. Typically, in regards to rep representatives, they are not really the best content. They're not really looked, on a, looked up upon as possible for the higher positions in government, if that makes sense. If here, here's the idea: the reason why most people look at senators or even governors is because that they're the executive, or in the case of the governors, they're the executive within their states. And for the senators, 
it's the, a much higher prestigious position within the legislative uh, branch of the federal government. That's why people typically focus on senators, not representatives. In fact, the le if I recall correctly within American, American political history, the only person, uh, the last, or at least the last known person, who was a congressman who never had any experience within the cabinet or even gained a Senate seat, who became president was Abraham Lincoln. And he was and he was chosen by his own party. He wasn't exactly voted in. So, I don't know. That's something that would definitely potentially hurt, hurt Byron Donalds, but he is a rising star within the Republican Party and a major name within the MAGA movement. So, and considering the fact that Donald Trump needs someone to to uh, um, continue not only his legacy, but the MAGA legacy, it would be someone like Byron Donalds. I would definitely support someone like Byron Donalds becoming the vice president, even in fight, despite the fact that he's a congressman. Uh, I know at least Stefanik is, has been talked about, and in some way it kind of makes sense. She's from Florida. She, she's a woman, which would definitely bring in some of the woman vote towards uh, the Republican Party, but at least Stefanik, she's from New York, which is a, a lean Democratic state, and I would not be surprised if once uh, her seat is removed, it w the position would be taken over by a Democrat, whether it be through a special election or or by uh, um, hmm. or by appointment by uh, Governor Kathy Hochul. I mean, it's kind of a uh, the position, the twenty first congress congressional district where she's from. It's kind of, I mean, it does lean towards the Republican she, Republican Party, especially since it voted voted for Donald Trump fifty four percent in both two thousand sixteen and twenty twenty, but it still has a su substantial Democratic minority. So, I don't know. And considering the fact that she is the chair of the House Republican Conference, I would think it would be better pragmatically to leave her in that position, at least for right now. J.D. Vance from Ohio, senator, which is a good pick, because as, as I said before, Senate is much more prestigious. He was just recently elected back last year in 2023. So that is that's a major issue because well, uh, he's kind of new towards being in in regards to being the senator, but nonetheless, he would further push Ohio, much like how Florida is with Ben Carson or Byron Donalds, into the Republican pol uh, column, and his senate would likely be appointed a Republican replacement. And considering the fact that there's a Senate race within. Ohio, that may potentially flip towards the Republicans. Who knows? That could be a further plus. <coughs> and finally, Glenn Youngkin from Virginia. Popular, already from a battleground state, and especially considering the fact that as of real, real clear politics based upon recent polls, Virginia is a toss-up state. So having someone like Glenn Youngkin who is a very popular governor, by the way, in the state, of, or the com, not the state, the Commonwealth of Virginia, I would say that that if, if Donald Trump picks Glenn Youngkin as his VP, it could push Virginia towards being Republican, potentially. I mean, it's a, it's a long shot, but so far, Donald Trump has been going on offense in places like uh, Minnesota, Virginia, New Mexico, New Jersey, uh, New Hampshire, and a few other places that typically have leaned Democrat in the past. So it would not surprise me one bit if he decided to choose Glenn Youngkin for this very reason. And he's known to be, at, at, at minimum, soft MAGA. And he does have his own presidential prospects. So either way, this would be a win. I, I would say this would be a win-win for both Glenn Youngkin and Donald Trump. Uh, I, I, although, admittedly, considering that he's a soft, that he is at least soft MAGA, that does uh, put me in iffy position with him. But nonetheless, I still got, I still like him. 
And finally, and and I know that there's been uh, reports of people like Tulsi Gabbard and Vivek Ramaswamy potentially being on his VP pick. I just, I don't know. In my personal opinion, as much as I like Vivek Ramaswamy, and he definitely did extremely well within the debates, as well as gaining at, le at least four, uh, fourth place in in the Iowa caucus, and the fact that he's growing in popularity every single day, and he's very aligned with Donald Trump and many of the issues. He's pretty cool, but he doesn't really have the political political experience. I'm afraid that he would do something that uh, uh, kind kind of like what happened with Donald Trump, how he was stabbed in the back in 2016, even in spite of the fact that he chose certain members who were who are rhinos and neocons in his cabinet as a means of trying to offer an olive branch to uh, the the establishment, the Republican establishment, and he was ultimately stabbed in the back. So I think, I don't know about Vivek Ramaswamy being VP as being attorney general and trying to deal with the FBI and the DOJ and how they've been um, persecuting a whole lot of people, including Donald Trump. Absolutely. He would definitely make a good cabinet position. Same with Tulsi Gabbard. Don't like I don't like the idea of her being VP, for my just my personal opinion, but I think there's a better position for her and a much more useful one, Secretary of State. That's fourth in line if you are forgetting about uh, VP and uh, Speaker of the House. Tulsi Gabbard would be the fourth in line of succession should she become the Secretary of State. She was a former soldier. She fought the wars, war in Iraq. And she has been, she is a former Democrat, which, it, although that is a major I if issue for me, in regards to her, <coughs> considering how much she's focusing focus on foreign policy and how much that's a, a major issue. Hell, Donald Trump has an issue in regards to how, and especially has been very consistent with this, with how America's been handling the for many of the forever wars that have been going on. So I would not be surprised if Tulsi Gabbard is chosen as Secretary of State in order to accomplish that accomplish that objective. The same because both Trump and Gabbard both have that similar goal. It would be a good makeup team. Again, Tulsi Gabbard, Vivek Ramaswamy, not the not VP material. Uh, cabinet positions on, on the other hand, I say would be much better, much better and more useful. Tulsi Gabbard would be able to help conduct diplomacy, prevent any possible co future conflicts in the Middle East or around the globe. Vivek Ramaswamy will be dealing with the issues at home, especially in regards to with the FBI, the DOJ, and many others as well. That would be a good team up. Now, I don't know what's going to happen and who's going to be Donald Trump's VP pick. But based upon my my analysis, those names are are probably the most likely to be chosen. I really hope either Byron Donalds or J.D. Vance becomes Donald Trump's VP. I really do, and I would not be, and I would not be upset with Glenn Youngkin either. All I do, all I do know is a lot of people would say sleep soundly at night with with having someone who is very supportive of MAGA and is very young to be able to take the raids if and when Donald Trump dies or is potentially in prison or anything like that. With, ha with having uh, someone younger than him, he would definitely be able to earn more of the youth vote and would, def Ed would definitely gain more, more potential uh, people to handle his legacy beyond his presidency. I I really cannot wait until he chooses whoever is going to be his VP pick. My name is Nomi Han of the Arc Truth. Please post a comment down below. Like this video, subscribe, share your friends. Also if you have any issues regarding my videos, such as how I speak or any of my improv, please post it down in the comment section down below or directly message me. Thank you. Mm -hmm.